All right. Well, this game has forced me to do something I have never done before, and that is take out all three tables. Uh, it's a Vietnam GMT games, and uh, in this video we're going to be going over the use of rangers, but I wanted everyone to get the broad scope of this. Pardon the glare. Uh, i got to adjust the lights later. Yeah. This is a full map setup. I am actually near the ceiling with a tripod. Uh, this game map is large. So just an idea of what you're in for. If you do get it and want to play the whole thing, uh, that's what you're looking at. These are three banquet tables. You can see them put together here on the side. Normally I have a cloth over these so it doesn't look too obvious. But uh, we're just going to be focusing on something down here on this part because I need to have all these displays. Now one thing about this game, it does have displays everywhere on the map so you will need parts of these maps even if you play smaller scenarios you're going to need uh, pieces of these maps everywhere and I can't stand when developers do that uh, and you got to fold the maps and stuff just to get certain charts I guess you could use them off board uh, I do think there is a resource general record track on the back of one of the cards I'll have to check but uh, I wanted to take a look at uh, South Vietnamese Rangers and their use um, just to see how this works. I'm going to bring this tripod down so you can kind of get a good idea here. Um, here's your free world allies listed on this side right over here <clears throat> and a lot of tables here. You've got your loyalty tables, eliminated units, things like that. We're going to be focusing in on replacement points which are going to be kept way up there. Uh, over on this part, up there, uh, is where those are kept. So the main problem with this is you're going to need to put counters on that big track up there. Let me walk this around. Uh, we're going to go up and over here. You're going to have to put counters on this big track up here. This is where a lot of things are tracked is on this. And that's like your, your main record display, and that's on the northernmost map, right? So if you don't play the full game, you're going to have to take this out, and you're going to have to fold it over or do something to get this track out there. I'll check the back of the cards and see if there's anything else, but uh, anyway, that's what we're looking at. Okay, I thought I'd seen one somewhere. Unfortunately, here's the weird thing. There is a smaller general record track available, uh, but it's, I mean, you're probably going to need this, right? It's on the back of this card, which I don't know. I don't know why it's on the back. I feel like you're going to end up needing this, but I haven't played enough to know. But I feel like you're going to need this, so you can't really flip it over. I guess you could photocopy it. Whatever. Uh, this one's a blank for some odd reason. It seemed like they knew that. Um, elsewhere. Uh, so I've had to shorten the map. I brought down just the northern map. And uh, your general display info is over here now. I brought it down and folded it. And then you're going to have an Arvin Ranger holding box. We're going to fill this in. 10.3 is where you want to reference that. Uh, there's a U.S. Navy holding box up here with naval points. Not sure why this just couldn't be a record, a marker that went here instead of having to use this, taking up more space. But. I don't design games, I just try to fathom them. So we'll see. Okay, uh, let's get into this. We'll stage this somewhere south of Da Nang, maybe in these cultivated areas south of Da Nang here. Uh, cultivated, as you can see, is this symbol. So we'll uh, we'll set up like a little example of an operation in Da Nang where there's a, uh, an attack going on, and we'll, we'll skip forward in the operation phase and we'll, we'll show the rangers coming in. Um, all right, let's take a look here. All right, we'll set up some fake numbers here. As you remember from my combat video that I just put, uh, remember they used replacements to siphon off casualty points. So we'll set this at two, we'll set the NVA at three, we'll put the US at seven, Arvin at eight, and this is all just made up stuff here, scenario lines, I don't know And you'll get a turn record track thing. I don't have that out. Uh, I could get it out though. Um, all right. And we'll use the good old 4th Infantry Division again today. Uh, we'll bring them back. They did not do well in my combat sample. 
from the weekend, however. Okay. And then we'll get our units out that we used from our other example, including the HQ and three battalions of the 4th. I know in my Rumor of War video, someone was having at me about the structure of the U.S. Army in Vietnam, but there is no way that I'm going to play that game again. Okay. Let's get all of our stuff out of here. Hopefully everyone had a decent weekend. We're going to name it a free fire zone. And let's get some artillery out there. And these are our units. We'll be using these again. I was going to use the first cav. I'll use the first cav to show air mobile, I think, probably. You know, want to look, this looks familiar to next war players. The yellow is going to be air mobile capable. Sometimes you'll do a scenario and it will tell you how many Arvin Rangers, if it's an operational scenario, uh, you're not going to be doing like the campaign with the seasonal interface. It'll tell you how many Rangers you get. So if you look here, you're going to have two Arvin Rangers in those boxes. So we'd have to fill that in. That's the allocation there. Uh, you have six U.S. replacement points, two Arvin replacement points, 10 air points. I have to find my air point counters. You'd put them on this chart. Uh, so we'll we'll just make up a number here. I want to fill the whole box with Arvin. Well, we'll make it three because you do have to roll equal to or below that number. So we want to make it kind of difficult, but I also don't want to fail because then I can't show you how they work. Okay, Arvin Rangers, I mean, they're not the most powerful unit. They're a 2-8, no intrinsic artillery, no pursuit modifier. But, uh, you know, they were some of the bravest units the South Vietnamese Army had, uh, and they fought, they fought bravely. So, uh, all right, we're going to put three over here. You just want to hold them there. I mean, you don't have to use this. I imagine you could use an index card. I have a feeling I would bump that. Um, but you only get, there's only five counters in the entire game. So um, they give you enough to match that holding box. We'll put three in there. And I'll show you how this works. Okay, I think we're all set here. Uh, what we have is a situation outside of Da Nang where an NVA, uh, an NVA regiment is threatening Da Nang. Okay, so um, also I should point out that uh, the NVA ha uh, can be augmented as well as the uh, South Vietnamese units. So you'll see a flip side for these guys to be augmented. Um, as far as I can tell, there's no breakdown ability for these guys. I check the rules a lot. Uh, just uh, south of Da Nang, uh, Da Nang's being threatened by this NVA regiment. Here's their HQ. And... I'm going to make this my target hex. I just put this out so you can see that it's a 4th Infantry Division. And we're going to be operating out of here with artillery support from Da Nang. And this time, I'm going to include the HQ because this HQ unit right on the bottom, he has really good artillery support, but he can only support his hex and the hex around it. He does not have a dot under there. And I think that's kind of what I did wrong the last time. We need more support. So we want to get that 7 and that 5 going plus the nine from this stack. Uh, we're gonna drop it on that target hex. It, you know, you won't see NVA out in the open really like this. I don't, I don't know, maybe they're launching an all out offensive on Da Nang and, and we've declared this a free fire zone. So we'll start the operation and we'll go through it here. Also, I just realized that the NVA player would probably not, oh, I'm sorry, the NLF player, he probably would want elect to, he would probably want to elect to operate here and to go first before the ally player but let's say this guy is a really bad player like i am and he says no and i'm willing to operate and we're going to do search and destroy right so again like i did in the combat example we flip this over to a and we go up here and uh is this an allied search and destroy up it is roll for rangers right away now i haven't placed any other counters i took them off i don't want to jump ahead roll for rangers okay uh 10.32 i'll read that uh one d6 if the number is equal to or greater than the number of rangers in play then receive rangers equal to the die roll. Rangers are placed into any hex containing an operating unit, no more than one ranger per hex. So we'll probably, because uh, this will be in here. Oh, that's a good question. If they're not operating yet, can rangers be rolled for? Yes, because I forgot to designate my operating units. It's going to be this stack. My bad. I skipped that. Okay, I'll just read the rule here for you. Um, <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, here we go. All right. I roll a die to include South Vietnamese Rangers. If the roll is less than or equal to the number of Rangers in the holding box, Rangers 
Ranger units equal to the die roll can be placed in any hexes containing operating units. If the roll is greater, none can be placed. No more than one Ranger can be placed in any given hex. If more Rangers are available than there are hexes containing operating units, the excess Rangers cannot be placed. So let's take a roll and see if I get it anyway. Let's just test my die rolling ability here. I might have to rig this just to make you guys uh, have a happy example here. All right, so basically I have one hex that's operating. I really, I mean, I can only get one anyway. But let's take a roll and see what happens. Okay, there I wouldn't have gotten any. <laughs> All right. And I would not have gotten any. Okay, let's roll two at a time. All right, that two. All right, there's two twos. I'll take that. You look over here, and we have three, but I only have one hex that can use them. So we're going to take these rangers out of here, and we're going to add them to the operation inside that hex, like that. Now I'm going into this with a lot more firepower, and the NVA is not in a hill like in my previous combat example. Let's move the die tower out of the way. So we should have a little bit better luck here. All right, so let's uh, see what we're going through next on the operation flow chart. <clears throat> and we are at the Rangers now. We're going to follow this up. Declare target hex. All right. We're going to declare this NVA regiment out in the open here, not augmented as a target hex. Uh, all right. Declare naval air support. Declare free fire zone. All right. We're declaring this a free fire zone outside today. We're letting it fly. All right, and we're going to move now here, and that's going to kick off any incidental or reaction movement, which I've also made it so that it won't happen here. We're going to move one into here. Um, cultivated is, let's see, for foot it's one, for mechanized it's four. I don't think we have any mechanized. We don't. All right, let's get those rangers in there with the boys here. Let's get ready for some combat. I'm hoping I can do a lot better this time. Now, the NVA does have three replacement points. If they take more than four, they're going to have to, that unit will be wiped out. You have to pay for it at that point. Uh, let, me, let me do the math here. They have a seven. Yeah, they'll be wiped out because you'll take three off replacements. You'll have four left. So that won't be good. All right. Uh, the U.S. has seven replacements. Okay. Next up, we are looking at... I'm going to follow along here. We're going to go ping over here. Do I want to do interdiction? No. Are there VC? No. Are there any target units in adjacent hexes or hexes occupied by operating units? Yes, there are. Am I in the target hex? Nope. Do I want to attack? Yes. And we kick up to here, and then you kind of know how that goes from here. You can do offensive interdiction, defensive interdiction, uh, announce attack, and this is where you would reveal units. Defender chooses terrain, cultivated. Uh, we're going to get a zero modifier on that. Uh, regional forces would be... Uh, okay, allied forces have to be defending. Regional forces may be used in any combat in South Vietnam in which allied forces defend. Regional forces add two to the combat strength of a force defending in a hex containing a town or a major city capital modifier and one to a force defending in cultivated terrain without any of these features. They may be used or not used in whole or in part at the discretion of the allied player. Uh, I'm not defending, I'm attacking, so, okay. All right, let's total up our DRMs, DRMs. And if at all possible, I'm going to avoid using that wonky three to two die roll modifier thing, uh, mainly because I don't know how to do the odds. So let's see if I can get this really good here. Let me add this up. All right, remember dedicated artillery such as this here can only support subordinate units such as these gentlemen here, the 320th NVA division. Uh, this is an independent artillery, so he will be chipping in. And then we have an HQ down here that will be supporting uh, the subordinates. And then we've got some Rangers. All right, so everyone can pause here to check my math. You ready? 23 points to NVA 15. Now, I'm close to that 3 to 2 thing, I think, but... I get one to one. So you people let me know if that's right or if I've done my effing math wrong again. I get one to one because you round in favor of the defender. So it's like 1.53333, round that down. I'm getting one to one. I thought maybe I was at three to two. Someone told me to just say one and a half. And I, I think I missed that by one point. I think I had to have eight. 
uh, well, half of 15, if you round, if you round in favor of the defender, I mean, it's it's tough. Anyway, so I would either get a plus one or a zero on this. Uh, you guys tell me the math on that. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and roll here and determine casualties. It is really hard to get those odds up, and I came at this guy with a load of stuff, and I still... These NVA units are tough. Very tough. Okay. All right, let's see what happens here. We'll do both ways. How's that with the plus one? I don't think I have that plus one die roll modifier, but we'll check. Here we go. You need a... Oh, God. I rolled the same thing again. Oh, man. Okay. Um... So brutal. Ugh, a one is really bad. Pew. Now I kind of want that plus one, but it's not going to make much of a difference. Either way, I'm going to get whacked here. Uh, okay. So if you remember the combat, you want to take your combat, your ground combat strength, and then add your enemy support. So we have to add up all of our ground combat strength numbers here, and then add the NVA artillery support. Okay, I get 19 for the US. I'm still on that same damn table. Uh, 14 to 21.5. I roll one, and it's uh, it's three losses again for the U.S. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Now we have to uh, we have to cross uh, check the defender, and they're going to take their ground combat strength plus the enemy support. I should get a better number on this part at least. Okay, I got 19 for the NVA, so they're on the same chart. Uh, and we rolled a one. They're going to take two losses. Uh, if we bump it up, the DRM... <laughs> if it's plus one, um... I don't, I don't see where... It's just not much better there. I would take two losses. He would take zero. I don't... That plus one DRM. This table is really freaking weird. I guess you want to roll high, but... Uh, yeah, it's weird. Anyway, uh, I'm getting they do take two losses, and I take three again. Man, it is really hard to dislodge these guys in this game. I should have, I guess I have to dump air power, and so I'm going to have to throw everything at the kitchen sink, short of a, a nuclear tactical nuke on these guys. Uh, okay, the U.S. Uh, is going to lose three. Now, uh, my previous example, um, I whacked a battalion, but you'll remember we have replacements here. So we're going to go over to this side, and we're going to soak that off with these replacements and uh, go down to four, if I could find four here, like so. Okay, I should note that if I had taken four losses there, uh, well, you can't you can't use the number of replacement points greater than your uh, combat strength. Well, I don't really need to worry about that here. I'm only using US-3. Uh, okay, the NVA now... Uh, has to soak up two losses now. If they didn't have replacements, they'd lose a whole regiment. But they do have some replacements here. They have three. They're going to soak that off here and go to one. And I'd have to say, again, uh, not the best operation for me. We're still considered to be operating here. And now we can look at... What do we got up next? I believe it was retreat or something like that. We are at... Rolling a D6, applying casualties. Round of operation complete. All support points for both sides are again available for use in the actions of the following round. So that's a round. Uh, retreat. Any target unit surviving the attack may move their full movement direction in any direction. Retreating units cannot end their retreat in enemy occupied hex. Any hexes occupied by target units after retreat are target hexes in the operation's new round. Uh, yeah, the MVA is going to retreat. So they will retreat. Remember, they're going to have to pay to get out of this hex, but they have a lot of movement. So they'll retreat back to here. And when you follow the retreat rules, okay, and we're going to go here. We're going to get back up into the jungle here. We're going to run to the jungle. <laughs> uh, now, after all desired retreats have been conducted, operating units may conduct pursuit movement. Um, man, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to pursue um, I haven't done pursuit movement on camera yet, but it's a pretty easy uh, chunk there. You can kind of read it. Uh, you'll have a pursuit movement bonus, and you'll want to check out page 18 of the rule book, but I won't, I won't do that here. Go here. I did my job. The NVA player doesn't want to be caught out in the open again because next turn I could pound him with air or something like that. And he's also down to one replacement point. Now, 
After that's done, I have the option to pursue. I don't want to. Uh, offensive reserve activation and movement. Uh, if anyone was eligible, I could draw them into the combat and they become part of this operation and we could keep going. Are there any target units in adjacent hexes or hexes occupied by the operating units? No. Then we go back to begin operating units. Operating, begin operation. So uh, it's it's really like units move a lot in this game. So anyway, it's hard to pin them down. We would go back up to the operation here and... We hit that flow chart again. Uh, if there were no operations to be done, then pretty much my entire turn would be over. And we're going to do ops complete on that. So because I didn't pursue, the operation is going to kind of die out because there's no one adjacent or I'm not in the hex. Uh, so that's part of the strategy is do you want to just enter the hex? That way if they do try to get out, maybe they only get one hex away, right? And it's, it's two movement points to move out. So... Um, you might be able to keep attacking them. But, you know, we forced them outside, back out, uh, let's see, with it's six, about 12 miles away from Da Nang, which sounds funny. It doesn't sound like a victory at all because it wasn't. I rolled like ass. But uh, we'll call that ops complete. So anyway, that's how Ranger's going. Oh, and then when you're done with the operation, the Ranger uh, goes back to the holding box, which I've already covered over and because it's on the map and knocked everything out of the way, which I wish it wasn't on the map, but that's whatever um and then you can use rangers more than once right during operation so like he'll go back and then you're back to having three so all right that is rangers and that's another failed op tell me what i'm doing wrong here uh the drm still wouldn't make much of a difference right i would still have lost and uh they would have actually been better off i think with that drm which is just such a weird table uh, I think I added everything up. But anyway, okay, that's Arvin Rangers, and I'll come back and do more things in the rule book here uh, before I try that seasonal interface, which I need to read that over a little bit more before I try it. Uh, keep in mind, there are some tutorial vids. Uh, there's a gentleman doing one on Vassal. I am not a Vassal guy. I like to do physical components. Um, so you could check him out. He is doing a full playthrough, I think. I think I saw his videos on BoardGameGeek. All right, everyone. Hope you had a good weekend, and take it easy.